cloud. Okay, hello, I am Dawn Ross, a certified hey, yoga therapist. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm coming to you from Calgary, Canada right now. So I just wanted to pop on Facebook Live with being persnickety. So I um, am doing it in Zoom instead, and I'll post the recording. Um, but I just wanted to share with you, uh, over the years, I've found some really powerful, simple ways to improve um, to improve people's ankles, knees, and hips via the feet. And in yoga, lots of times we really only kind of talk about the tripod of the foot, or if you prescribe to the um, school of thought where it's the four corners of the foot, so the mound of the pinky toe, the mound of the big toe, the inside and the outside of the heel, or the tripod, pinky toe mound, big toe mound, and the center of the heel. But there's ways that we can use simple yoga props like a strap, mini bands, yoga block to really change somebody's experience of classical yoga poses. When we change that physical experience, how the joints of the ankles, the knees, the hips are experiencing the yoga asana, we also affect the other koshas. So the breath body, the bliss body, etc. Okay. So I'm not going to get a ton into the anatomy of the foot. But one thing I want you to understand is I kind of think of the foot like a mini spine. Okay, because it has a ton of joints. Okay. And in a well articulating and functioning foot, our heel can move side to side, which is known as eversion and inversion independently of the front of the foot. And a lot of people use, lose this midfoot mobility because we just don't use it. And if we think about how important twisting is for the spine, the twisting of our foot is very important in terms of how the tissues of our ankle and knees and our hips load and transfer force, okay? So um, if a low back is overworking, typically a, a foot is underworking, okay? So if somebody's got back pain, lots of times that their, how their foot is interacting with the ground and the environment is suboptimal. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of external cues. And that's because I think as a collective, we have gotten really good at managing our body um, top down. <laughs> So thinking and then making our body do things. And so I wanna share with you some ways we can use props today that have our body experience something and our brain experience something that we don't have to manufacture with our brain. So more of a bottom up, feed, for, feed forward, um, sensory input driven rather than cognitively driven. Okay, so, Grab your yoga strap. Do you have a strap? No, I don't have any of this stuff. No, but you have a belt? Somewhere, probably. Uh, T T towel also works. T towel? T towel? Yeah. Okay. And uh, far left covered facing me. Okay. So first thing you're gonna do is just come to standing and notice how it just feels to stand today. Notice, notice where there's pressure on your feet. You don't need to, to do anything. And then wherever your feet naturally were, I also want you to check in with how standing feels, bringing your feet right together because this is a place that we can recheck um, with greater accuracy after we do what we're gonna do. So just notice how your static posture feels, not just your feet, but just how you feel managing the load of gravity, standing with your feet together today uh, with eyes open, but then also check in with eyes closed. 
and you might notice a sway. You might notice that you really don't want to close your eyes. Just notice what you notice. Feel a sneeze coming on. Bless me. All right. So what we're going to do with uh, the yoga strap is take it and or, or um, front edge of a tea towel, fold the tea towel so you've got a kind of a strip. And we're just going to put the ball of the foot on it. So man to the big toe, man to the pinky toe. And just where the feet are comfortable. And then what you're going to do is just rock across the front of your foot. So you take weight to the big toe mound and kind of squish that yoga strap or teeth out this under your foot and then to the pinky toe. And as you do that, just kind of notice how the rest of the foot moves. Can you keep the other edge of the foot in contact with the yoga strap when you press into the big toe mound or does it lift off? See if you can, Keep the whole ball of the foot in contact, but you're going to press with the big toe mound and then reach across and press with the pinky toe mound, reach back and press with the big toe mound. Okay, and just a little press. It's just like you're kissing that spot into the yoga strap. Okay, one more time. Good. And then just come to standing for a second and notice what you notice just wherever again, the feet are comfortable. And then bring the feet together. Eyes open and then check eyes closed and just notice. You might notice that there's more wobble or less. We've only done one part of the foot. So let's stay with that same foot. And now you're gonna bring the heel onto it. Okay, so the center of the heel is on that feet towel or yoga strap. And you're going to roll so that the, it, there's weight on the inside edge of that heel. And then you're going to roll across the heel so that there's weight on the outside edge of the heel. It's okay for the knee to bend a little bit. Again, just notice how your lower leg, your upper leg moves. For some people, this if their midfoot is really stiff, you'll see a lot of the knee going in and out or um, in order to move that heel. I want you to find the most subtle iteration of being able to weight the inside edge of the heel and the outside edge of the heel as is possible for you. Okay, use the least amount of work. Now start to bring in moving whatever you need to of the body. So that could be the hip, could be turning the shoulders, could be moving the knee, so that you bring as much weight as you can to the inside edge of that heel, and then bring as much weight as you can to the outside edge of that heel. And just let whatever needs to move, move. Okay, then you're gonna come off of that yoga strap. And again, just stand wherever the feet are comfortable. Notice what you notice here. And then recheck that static posture where our feet come right together, eyes open, eyes closed. Okay, I definitely feel more grounded in that foot that we've done. And I feel more space in that low back. I feel like that leg's a little bit longer, although, you know, than the other one. Okay, so we're gonna go through that on the other side. So bringing the ball of the foot on the yoga strap, find the big toe mound and reach across to then kiss the pinky toe mound. See if the toes can remain relaxed and long, and then reach back across and find a little bit more connection or kiss with the big toe mound. Don't worry, it can be super subtle. Notice if you have to use your heel a lot or if the heel can stay fairly quiet. 
then it's not wrong if the heel is moving or you have to kind of bend the knee or you have to move the rest of the body. Now I want you to kind of go from stretching and connecting that big toe mound to stretch the pinky toe mound and just let whatever needs to move, move. To kind of kiss each point across the ball of the foot. Okay, and then let that go. Come to standing. Just notice what you notice. And again, do that recheck with the feet right together. Eyes open and then eyes closed. Yeah, my one leg's still longer than the other. <laughs> so notice what you notice. And then we're gonna put that heel on the yoga strap. And if you didn't have a yoga strap, um, and you were teaching, like you could use the edge of a yoga mat as well, right? Just some differentiation and a bit of squish. I mean, if you've got one of those really um, dense yoga mats that isn't very pliable, it might not work as well. So now you're gonna roll to the inside edge of that heel and to the outside edge of that heel. And think of it less, a little bit, maybe less of, like you're going from side to side and think of the heel like a rainbow arc. So you might even think of what, what if it's more of my heel turns because my shin turns a little bit. Like my heel goes side to side because my shin does a little bit of a turn. Okay, and just feel how that feels. Notice what moves. Let any part of your body that needs to move, let your hips move, let everything move to get as much weight to the inside edge of that heel and then to the outside edge of that heel. Let your brain really feel weight to the inside of that heel bone and to the outside of the heel bone. Okay, then you're going to come off to stand and then let's bring the feet together again and check, recheck, eyes open, eyes closed. And just notice what you notice. You might walk around your yoga mat a little bit and kind of just see how walking feels. Okay, so that's one way I could use the yoga strap. I want to show you another way. And so you just need kind of the corner of it. Okay, and we're going to work with it on our front leg and a couple of standing um, postures. So I'm going to bring that front corner of my yoga strap or tea towel and face the short end of my mat. And I'm gonna bring my big toe mound and, and big toe, the length of my big toe onto that corner. So I've just got my first ray, my big toe mound, my hallux, and then my big toe on that folded yoga strap or kind of little folded tea towel. Okay, the rest of my foot is on the yoga mat. And then what I'm gonna invite you to do is we're simply gonna step back and open up those hips and come into a version of warrior two. Okay, so if you've done this position before, that front foot is facing one direction, then we've opened up the hips and that back leg is towards the back edge of our mat in some internal rotation, okay? So we've just got the yoga strap underneath that big toe. I want you to focus on giving a little press into that yoga strap through that big toe and just see how that feels in your knee and in your hip in this warrior two. Now we're gonna hinge forward over that front leg and just bring our forearm onto it could be our hand and that back hand 
is going to reach up and alongside of our ear. So we're an extended side angle here. Again, just a little more, it's kind of feeling the strap underneath the big toe mount. Okay, from here, we're going to straighten that front knee, reach that top arm up. So our front leg is straight, our back leg is straight. We're in a variation of triangle. Okay. From here, we're going to bend that front knee again, bring our torso upright. Straight back leg, we're going to bring that thigh onto it. Reach that front hand up, come into Exalted Warrior. Come back, hands at shoulder, okay? And then we're gonna turn the hips, spin that back heel, step forward, both feet next to one another. Just come off of that yoga strap and notice how it feels in standing. Again, bring the feet together, eyes open and then eyes closed. Okay, so that was sort of impacting the, 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 big, the big toe. Okay, so just noticing what you noticed with those postures. We're gonna stay with the front foot and we're gonna move through those same shapes. What I want you to do though, is you're gonna take your yoga strap and you're gonna place it so it's, um, under the outside of the heel. Okay, so we'll come to standing and it will kind of go to the middle of your heel. Oh, I said, we're gonna go inside of the heel. So we'll come to standing, it's on the inside edge of the heel, sending us into a little, little bit of inversion. So a little bit of weight on the, um, or encouraging us to reach into E version, the weight on the inside edge of that heel. We're gonna step back with that other leg, heel lifted, and then you're gonna rotate it so we turn ourselves into, again, this warrior two shape. But this time now we've got something underneath our heel instead of our big toe, toe mound. Okay, so just let your foot kind of figure itself out here a little bit. You'll notice that you feel different things in your hip, hopefully. I know I definitely do. You guys that are on the call with me, do you feel stuff different in your hip with where the thing is underneath your foot now? Just get, I, you're muted, so just a thumbs up if it feels different than where you had the strap before. Yeah, okay. So I feel a lot more of my outer hip with it here, okay? It's definitely helping me bias a little bit more external rotation at my hip and I can feel those external rotators working differently than when it was under my um, big toe mound. So notice what's happening for you. We've all got different tendencies and habits. So you might prefer the other one to this one or you might prefer this to the other one. So we're gonna bring those hands up. We'll move through to side angle. So just coming onto that forearm or onto that hand, reaching that other arm up alongside the head, straightening that front leg. We come into a bit of trikonasana. Yep. And then we're gonna bend that knee again, straighten out the torso, reach the arms, take that back hand to the back thigh, find a little bit of an exalted warrior. Okay, and then we're gonna spin that back heel. So a nice long lunge and step that back leg up. Just come to standing. Notice the left and the right side. And bring the feet together and just notice that static posture with eyes open and eyes closed. I feel a lot more stacked on that side that we've um, 
had the yoga strap under the foot. Okay, so we're gonna do one more cycle um, or two more cycles through that same yoga posture. Those same yoga postures. We're gonna stay in the same orientation, uh, but we're gonna put the yoga strap underneath our back foot in a couple of different places. Okay, so you'll kind of have to wiggle your way, but the first place that we're going to put that yoga strap underneath that back foot is underneath that heel. And the, the outside edge, actually of the whole outside edge of the foot. So I'm going to go from my, that strap is going to be under my heel and under my pinky toe. of whatever my back leg is. Okay, so find your way into your version of warrior two, okay, with the outside edge of the heel and the outside edge of the pinky toe on that yoga strap. We're going to come up. Just feel how it is to have something underneath that other foot for a sec. Okay, front hand's going to come down either elbow to the thigh or hand to the thigh. That back arm's going to cycle around beside the ear. Extend that arm up. Okay, then we're going to straighten that front leg. Keep that top arm over the shoulder. And then we're gonna lift the torso, bending that front knee, finding that upright warrior two again, back hand to that thigh, reach up, exalted warrior. Okay, lift that back heel, step it or hop it forward, just come to the front of your mat, stand. Notice how that feels in standing, and then feet together in standing, eyes open, and then check in, eyes closed. Okay, we're gonna go through that on our other side. So just walk a little bit and notice how walking feels. Okay, so just give me a thumbs up if there's a, a difference just in using the yoga strap from sort of the first check-in and standing to the end here. And again, some placement under your foot is gonna have more impact for some of us than other placements. So that more impact one, you'll wanna do a bit more of it because that's a change that your brain is paying a lot of attention to. Okay, so um, we are going to go through it on the other side because you can you can do that on your own. You can pause this and do it on your own when you watch the recording. Um, and we're not symmetrical anyway, so it's okay. So I want, but I want to show you some stuff with the mini band uh, now. So what you're going to do with the mini band is sit down, or you can stand. But I find it easier to put on sitting down. And we're going to take the band across the front of our ankle and then take one loop around our heel and then loop the other loop around our heel. So what you'll end up with is kind of a strap above the front of the ankle and below the front of the ankle and around our heel. Okay, and I'm going to show you this sitting down, but when you do this at home, you could absolutely do this. This is actually one of my favorite things to do in legs up the wall. So um, if you're comfortable sitting on the ground, you can come to this 
position, or if you're going to be more comfortable and you've got access, you can come onto the wall in this position. Okay, so you decide where you want to be. Stay here, but I'll ch move the camera so that you guys can see my feet a little bit better. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. So we'll be able to get that angle of what my feet are doing a little better. Okay. So legs up the wall. Now with the, um, the band on the ankle, um, I can really start to differentiate kind of my, what's my heel, or rear foot, and what's the forefoot or the front of the foot. So what we're gonna do is just draw the heels down the wall. And in doing that, you'll feel the back of your calf stuff engage, might even cramp, and then you're gonna slide the heels up the wall. Now this is different than pulling the toes towards your face and pushing the toes towards the wall. I want you to focus on the movement of your heel around the bottom of your leg. Coming into dorsiflexion and then into more plantar flexion and that plantar flexion really Letting the toes in the front of the foot be a passenger with this heel. Okay, so even that little bit, likely we're feeling some warmth across the front of our ankle joint. If I was sitting on a beach of kind of wet sand and I was doing this, I'd be digging a hole under my heel. Okay, so the next time we come to this dorsiflexed position, I want you to think about widening across the front of the foot. So like find that big toe mound and reach across to the pinky toe mound. Keep reaching the heels up the wall. And think about drawing the front of your foot like towards the head of your mat or in the direction of your head. And it might be quite for four, three, two, and one, and then just relax that. Okay, so now that ankle that we've got the um, band on, I usually will do this with someone and I haven't touched that ankle, but they sprained. Typically, we'll, we'll re sprain the same ankle, so that'll be the one that I put the band on. And um, we're going to bend our knees so that we bring the whole foot onto the wall. So you might need to wiggle your hips away from the wall a little bit so that your hips are at 90 degrees and the knees will be less or greater than 90 degrees, but that you can feel your whole foot on the wall. Okay? So I want to reach from the big toe mound across to that pinky toe and just let the heel kind of or the rear foot just kind of hang you might get a sense of kind of stretch through the intrinsic muscles of the foot and then imagine drawing down the wall with the ball of the foot just to the point that you feel the flesh of your buttocks kind of lift off the ground you'll feel the back of your thigh Stuff working, you'll feel a little bit of glutes, you'll feel a little bit of abs. But those things are all like kind of at 25%. Okay? So just a little bit of a reach across the front of the foot and then a pull down the wall with actually without actually moving. 25% kind of lower leg, back of the leg, butt, butt and core, where we can breathe easy. Okay, keeping that, now you're going to lift the heels, coming into as much plantar flex as you can expand, that might increase the back bend, 
and then let the heel hang under the fourth foot again. And then you're going to draw the heels up. Like a calf raise, but on the wall. Again, you might get cramping in the, the calf. Because often when we're fully weighted, we think about pushing into the floor to lift the calf rather than drawing the calf and using the back of the lower leg muscles. So this might be a new sort of input. One more. Eee! And then relax, let the hips lower down, relax the feet. Just take the legs up the wall and rest there for a minute. So I, I love legs up the wall and I love it even more. Once I do a little bit of um, work in it. Okay, so we're gonna take the uh, band off. You could do ankle circles with that band. It just provides a little bit of proprioception. Um, and again, differentiation between the front of our foot and the rear of our foot that could be helpful, especially for people that have had an ankle sprain. So we're gonna lower the legs um, down the wall, roll onto the side. And again, come up to standing um, and just check in with either walking or that static posture. And then we're gonna come down and use the mini band for one more sequence in a bridge position. So when you come to standing, feet together. Eyes open and then eyes closed or just walk and notice what's different. Um, I'm gonna mute you, just hold on a sec. Or you might have to mute yourself. No, I got, got, it. It. I got it. Yeah. The question I had when, when we did the yoga strap and we and we stood on the outside of our our foot you want the yoga and i'm on the tea towel so when i'm doing it should i make sure that the rest of the tea towel isn't under the rest of my foot yes okay you just okay. want it so the the foot will be like this on whatever you're using so if it's a bigger object, that bigger stuff needs to be out here. It needs to be out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That that was a P I kind of figured that and we're kind of working in small space around dogs and, and yeah, I'm yeah. really wanting Auntie Mary to see all your amazing work and yeah. <laughs> so okay. We're, just make, we're making it work, Don. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. So um we're gonna do a, a bridge sequence. If with what we did with the drawing down the wall, mm -hmm. you had a hard time feeling the back of your thigh stuff, use a chair. If on the drawing down the wall, you kind of got a sense of like the lower leg, back of the leg stuff, the back of the thigh stuff, the butt stuff, the abs, everything kind of turning on a little bit, mm -hmm. um, then go for it with your feet on the floor. But if you found that it, it was like way more lower leg or you um, felt it in your low back, then try what we're gonna do next with your feet elevated on a surface. So whether that's a chair or an ottoman or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, pardon? No, we're good, we're good. Okay. And then have your mini band. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna mute you guys again. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna use the chair. I'm just gonna put my feet on the ground and I'm gonna back these up a little bit. You can see all of me. Okay, so just have the mini band in your hand. You're gonna bring your uh, feet onto the floor. Nice. I think 
And then um, all you're gonna do is think about pulling your heels and your the sole of your foot back towards the pelvis and back, try to pull towards the pelvis to let the pelvis lift off the ground. So it's kind of just a full action, push into the ground. And you don't need to lift super high. We don't want to come into any spinal extension. Just want the back of the leg stuff working right now for a sec and just lower and come up a few times like that. Okay, so notice what you notice with that bridge. Again, in terms of like who is helping do this movement? Where do you feel the effort? What happens with your breath? Do you hold the breath in anticipation of coming off the ground? Nothing's bad or wrong. I just want you to notice what your tendency is, okay? And then we're gonna take the mini loop and the first place we're gonna put it is across the ball of our foot. Now, if you didn't have a mini band, like this is a bit stretchy, you could also use a yoga strap, okay? So you could use a yoga strap as well, okay? And again, now you're just going to do that less and just ask yourself, like you're the eye doctor, is this clearer and kind of more and more even distribution of work? Am I feeling it differently and more kind of synchronously across the tissues of the, the legs and the hips? Or is it better without? Or was it better without the strap, the, the, the band? Okay, once you assess that, then we're gonna move the band so it comes across the front of the ankle and the outside of your heels. So it's still kind of on your foot, but now on the rear foot. So across the front of the ankles and outer edges of your heels. And again, in track with the ground, band there now. Okay. So with the band in the best of those better places for you, what we're going to do is turn the toes out slightly. And then we're going to start to just roll the knees side to side. As you come side to side, you'll come on to like the outside edge of one foot, the inside edge of the other foot, and then you'll go across the sole of the foot. I also want you to try it now where you lift the front of the foot, no matter where the band placement is, take the knee side to side and roll across your heel. And notice for your body, is this better with the front of the foot lifted? Or is it better with the front of the foot low down? And what you want to be checking for is what, in terms of what's better, is your hips feel better, your low back feels better. There's more clarity in terms of where you're rotating, where rotation is happening in your body. Okay. Now, whichever was the better of front of the foot down, front of the foot lifted, go there. Just be still for a second. Now we're gonna lift the hip. So we've got our best band position, our best foot position. And now with the hips lifted, you're gonna take the knee side to side. Bear in mind your range will be a lot smaller likely because we've just increased the load. 
Okay, just do a couple with the hips lifted. Last one, lower the hips, take the band off, come to your side. Let's come up to either walking or that static posture to check in. And then we're gonna do one more thing in standing to finish with the yoga block. So don't worry, you don't have to come back down once we go up. Come up to standing. And if you're checking in with that static posture, feet are together, try with the eyes open and then with the eyes closed. Notice how that feels. Okay, I'll just unmute you guys for a sec. Uh, wrong place, there we go. Oh, I think you guys are still muted. Yeah, no, I didn't. Mary didn't know what to do there. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, so how was that with the, the bridge? What was your experience of like the, the, the better, 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 better? Better with the band on and best when the band is on the front of my foot and best when I'm lifting my toes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So I can see that the isometric, the, the bridge stuff in the flexible core, mm -hmm. I'll be doing it with the band on. Yeah, cool. So, and what, what we did down there with the band, we could also do um, similar to the standing postures we did with putting the yoga strap under the big toe mound, under the pinky toe mound, under the outer inner edge of our foot, we could do bridging with just the strap input like we did in the standing postures. That will also change our experience of bridge. Um, For myself with my left leg, Dawn, um, I feel that the band gives me support so that I feel stronger in my hip to bridge. Yeah, So cool. I'll, I'll try it with the band and see if it changes something and gives me the stability in my hip. Without, yep. without the, I don't have the stability. I can only lift about yep. that much. Yeah, so it's, you know, our, our brain is paying attention to movement and kind of how we can generate tension and pass it through tissues way more than it's paying attention to like a single muscle. That's why I love props, especially because then the, we can get into more of feel the movement and let our joints experience the movement. And you knew instantly without pre-thinking about it, which one felt more stable, better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we don't have to go top down. We can, we can just offer a different input with the prop and let the system inform the brain. The, the brain is, gets super excited and super engaged when it feels that different better, just like the eye doctor. Right, right. Right? Um, and that's actually calming. Right. I forgot about that phrase. I need to share that with Mary to get her to remember it's, is this better or this better? As opposed yeah. to doing a set exercise yeah yeah totally. it, if i wait because she's doing something with toe raises but it's on the ground so when you talked about doing it on the wall she went oh right because she's then she's focusing on the toe raises as opposed to keeping oh, no. her balance and yeah and then yeah. you can feel the back of the calf engage whereas when we're standing often it's too loaded but I'm gonna show you a version of it standing. So okay. if, if you want, this is primarily using um, a block, but again, we're gonna use the band like we did with legs up the wall. So put it on your other foot this time though, and that's the side we'll focus on. So band comes across the front of the ankle, 
loops around behind the heel and then the other one. And um, last time we, we put part of the band above the ankle joint, like on our lower leg and on our foot, but I'm gonna leave it this time right across my ankle crease. So instead of having that be open and have band below and band above, I'm gonna put it right across. That's hard. Okay. Yeah, you got and it. then, and then this, you could use your yoga strap or you could use um, like fold up your yoga mat a little bit, but you want to make a kind of a one and a half to two, one and a half inch height with whatever you fold. And that is going to go, the block is going to go on that. Right in the middle. So I've created this little teeter totter. Okay. Okay. Um, a highlighter works too. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so the yoga strap just creates, but often in a yoga space, we don't have a billion highlighters. So, <laughs> okay. So you can come with your feet next to one another, or you can have one foot back and our front foot is on the yoga block. Okay. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get used to tipping that block forward and back. It's a teeter-totter. Yeah. It's a teeter-totter. Now, what you can play with is lift your back heel as you tip forward and then lower your back heel so that you get a little bit more momentum with that tip forward of that front foot. Yeah? Yeah. Now, when you tip forward this next time, pause. And I want you to keep your big toe mound and your pinky toe mound on the block, but I want you to lift your toes. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, so you'll feel the front of your ankle stuff engage. Mm -hmm. And now I want you to lower your toes, reach your heel into the block. Yeah. Okay. Once you get there, again, reach across the front of the foot and lift your toes. That's hard. I know. Okay. Then you're going to lower your toes, press into the block to teeter totter. Let your knee go with the, the foot. Once you get over there, you're going to lift your toes. Stay wide across the front of the foot. Lower the toes, reach through the heel. Quit thinking, quit. Okay, once the heel finds the ground again, you're gonna lift the front of the toes. Lower the toes, press. I see, yep, press through the front of the foot. Once the front of the foot finds the ground, this time I want you to lift the heel off the block. Your other foot will come off the ground. So if you need to hold on to something for support, go for it. Hold on to me. Okay, lower the heel. Reach the heel back so your ankle and your knee flex a bit. Lift your toes. Lower your toes. Press into the block, when the block hits the ground, lift the heel. Lower the heel, reach it to the ground. You get the idea, okay? Yeah. Great, great work to strengthen the foot, the ankle, the knee, come off to stand. What about, what about the hip? I feel like it's working my hip too. Oh yeah, it works your hip, yeah, for okay. sure. Ladder, ladder, ladder up. Come to stand, eh? Check in with that feet together, eyes open and eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
So, and I didn't, you wouldn't, you don't have to have this band on if you have it great, but that little tipping exercise of that um, block is really powerful, especially if you've got anybody that um, hikes, right? Or if you're somebody that you've ever had this happen where you're walking along and you kind of step off the edge of a curb or like a lip of a sidewalk, and it feels like you your other leg is like gone into the Grand Canyon and there's almost this like clunky feeling further up the chain. This kind of, uh, um, you know, having to be with some instability and momentum, you know, can be really helpful in our, in our yoga practice. But doing that and then coming and doing something like warrior three or tree pose, like that becomes my standing leg. And then I do a dynamic balance pose. Yeah. Totally different feeling um, through my, my legs, like a lot less effort and a lot more um, sense of balance and stability. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. That's kind of what I, those, things or things I've been wanting to share. So sharing them and take them and play with them in your yoga practices and in, in different ways than what I showed you today, for sure. Um, the yoga strap can be super useful in something like uh, Baddha Konasana, right? Or the tea towel. So I come here and you often will see people and they kind of fall out to the outside of their, their ankles. They can mm -hmm. kind of be here all day. Well, I'm gonna take my yoga strap and run it through the inside of the heel and the big toe mound. And I want you to keep squishing that. Okay, uh, so now, so I, I want this happening now as now we do our movements. Yeah, because that's in, gonna- In but... this position. All of a sudden, I've got a lot more, uh, a, a, a very different sense and grounding through my hips. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how people experience um, postures here. Also, with something like Marie Chasna, where that foot, one leg's out long and this foot is in, right? And I'm just going to have it under the big toe mound and play with how that is, or maybe I put it under the pinky toe mound or the whole outside edge of my foot, and you'll really see changes in people's um, physical asana, but also then in those other koshas. Yeah, so you'll I, see their breath change. And I was wondering with that, because of my mobility on that, on my left side, Mm -hmm. would putting the yoga strap under there help that would help sh shift my hip wouldn't it and maybe make it easier for my leg to move into my chest yeah okay i'm going to play with that after we're done yeah totally okay have cool. fun exploring that stuff thanks for joining me today i'm going to stop the recording okay